Hi there, this is Jim the Keys Bartender coming to you on this uh, cloudy, cool morning. Cloudy, cool morning. It is. It is cloudy and cool in here. I ran into some uh, nice people last night at the bar. And it was trivia night. I normally do not work on a Tuesday night. I appreciate the work when we have it. We were closed an extra day due to a a funeral on Sunday of an affiliated individual. I shouldn't say affiliated. It was a close individual. I spoke about Bob. We were closed that day. And uh, so... I got the opportunity to work an extra day, and I normally don't work that trivia night, and I'll go into more details about that. I'm not going to be talking too much about making drinks today, but mainly it would be what what really piqued my interest yesterday was when we have people that come from, I do mention to you about people that live in the Keys, when they go other places or when it gets cool down here that they're rather thin skin, not personality wise. Let me pause this for a second. When I say thin skinned, I'm referring to their in the ability to in, endure cool weather. So I noticed people last night they just wore heavy hoodies and fleece jackets and things like that and it was 70 degrees yeah that's what happens down here but we had some visitors and it was Isabel and Jason and they're from the west coast Isabel is originally from uh, Subban Philippines and she's from her family had a dive resort and we were talking and she said how she chilly she was here and she goes she was much colder on the west coast because they had been in the 40s and unusually for southern california but there was in the 40s and 50s there and they were hoping to escape to warmer climes and it turned out to be warm love lovely couple uh and it just made me think about how people acclimate to the weather And we have in front of us the next week, week and a half, we have some cooler weather. Oh, for a change. This past couple months or two months, whenever we get a cold front, it would only last for three days. And then it would go up to 80s again. But even even today, would it cooler? It's still a couple degrees warmer than normally this time of year. Which is good for our visitors. Not necessarily good for the people that expect cooler weather. Getting back to the technology, trivia has changed so much in bar trivia. Not the questions as much as it's presented using, uh, oh God, a power, you know, whatever PowerPoint or presentations and things like that, that they're able, people are able to build more. I guess visually pleasing and dynamic questions when it comes to trivia. A little more excited. They can attach music to it and things like that. And Sean Dickens, a close friend of the show, who might be, I think he might be on the show on Friday. Well, I don't know if it'll be live or recorded, but live or recorded doesn't really matter technology wise, right? Because it will have been recorded within a half hour of me releasing it. A lot of times you really wouldn't know unless you want to try to interact on the chat if you're listening on Spreaker. Today is, uh, as you can tell, I guess it gives you... that It it just shows whether it's live or not when it comes in there. Oh, look, you know, it's funny. Being a guy approaching his 60s, I did give you a rundown before about my history with technology. I graduated high school in 1982. And in 1982, I went to a school of total had 4,200 students. 4,200 students. 
it was uh, segregated between the sexes. Women on one side, guys on the other. And in my school, there may have been two computers. Two computers in 1982. Maybe one more. Maybe three. And that's, I'm not saying in the office, but for access to the students, computers were not, desktops were not widely used. They had brands you never heard of. Uh, Commodore, I think IBM had a, a couple of them, and they used Visual Basic, and programming was in its infancy compared to today. Now, I know in the 40s, late 40s and 50s, programming was different, but, I mean, it was Greek. And when I went to college, they had Fortran, and uh, I think Pascal was another one of the, and COBOL. Cobalt, I think it's Cobalt or Cobalt. And I was a history and political science major, so I didn't get a lot of... And there was PL1. They were still using card readers when I was... Uh, it was the end of it. They were using punch cards for programming. And each card was one line of code. So if you had a program of that had 300 lines in it or 200 lines in it, that'd be 200 cards, 200, 300 cards. And you had to be in the order. They always had to be in the order of their placement and undamaged. Otherwise, they wouldn't read correctly. And if you don't read one line of code, then you're fucked. So I came about to, uh, I think the year after I, I started college, they were requiring the incoming freshmen to get computers, and it was the Mac at that time. And the Mac did very little, very little. I mean, it played a couple of games. It was a word processing. It was pretty much a word processing tool. And if you got really acquainted with the Mac and the mouse and all that stuff that they had, uh, today you'd be you know if you if you went from directly from the infancy of the home computer to today it's night and day it's like the difference between the telegraph and the telephone almost that it was just a word processing i was using a electric typewriter in college and a year later they were using this uh Mac and the thing about it every time you if you did not hit save if you did not hit save you could lose a whole term paper 20 pages of work gone like that nowadays it's continually saving right and you don't there's very little accidental deletes and things like that and you could send them, you could save. Now you have the option of saving into remote folders if you're worried about having access to it. You have Google Drive, you have the Apple online storage and things like that. You can email it to yourself and access the email anywhere and print out your your papers and all that stuff. And there was a whole bunch of other things you could do with it now but in the infancy of the home it was purely purely a word processor and you look at it and say what the hell is the use of this it was like those first cell phones that came out the bag in the box cell phones bag in a box bag in the box no bag in the box is for liquid it's a bag phone you carry it around it was maybe eight pounds and you call up and the reception was shitty. You didn't always get through. You always got a better, you always get like 100% better per, uh, reception if you just went to a pay phone. But people would pay out their ass a couple hundred dollars a month. Easy. A couple hundred dollars a month. It could be upwards of $500 a month for the convenience of being able to take a phone call and make a phone call from remotely in in the 80s 
And then, obviously, you, you look at it and you say, well, man, this won't be, you can't have important phone calls or anything like this on the, the cell phone. And then, where nowadays, people just ditch their landline. So getting back to trivia, trivia used to just be, you read the questions, people would hear it, you, they wouldn't post the questions, you wouldn't see, you wouldn't see it posted on the screen. You just hear it. Now you got all these graphics. And Sean does an amazing job with it. And he throws some humor in there. And he's a very, what would you call it, polished host. So I go and work trivia last night. And what happens with the trivia? You got all these people there. And it wasn't particularly busy. I mean, I'll leave that to people staying inside because it's busy season. Or because of... Perhaps maybe people getting sick. No hints for that. No, hey, hey, hint, hint. But I'm bartending there. And the nice thing about it is that you get the same people that come in for these teams. And you get visitors that come in for it. And they form their new teams and all that stuff. You know how that is. But as a bartender, if there's a team that's undermanned or doesn't have the amount and it can have up to five members I'll join in and it's fun but you gotta like I'm thinking of the question and making drinks at the same time and usually a lot of times the really great trivia uh, hosts the ones that come up with the questions kind of put clues into the question sometime kind of like Jeopardy It's it's not only the straight out question they're asking, but the clues to the answer is in the question. So, and you could tell, say, listen, they'd only ask this question if there was something like nuanced about it. So we had a great time last night. We're doing all that stuff. Having uh, just some questions and hit up with the ancient history, my, my forte and some movies. I'm really good with movies. Maybe some, if they ever throw any international relations. My weakness, sports. But even sports, you know, in a certain amount. They asked questions last night. The most hits. And what happens with people that aren't really good with sports. They see hits and they think home runs. They, they think home runs. It's the number of hits. And they had Pete Rose listening Pete Rose was at the top of the list. They wanted to rank. I would have gotten that one point, but I I was busy at the time. I wasn't able to contribute. I said, well, they did say hits, and I think Pete Rose is right there with that. It's an interesting question. Kind of nerdy stuff, but they really enjoy it. They really enjoy that stuff. And their people are very dedicated. They are. They're very dedicated and even though at the end of the day, when they win, they get a gift certificate. They get a couple. Every time they went around, they get around the shots, which I cannot partake. I do not partake. Uh, one reason is I don't drink. Second reason is I'm working. I know some of these people out there were talking about working, drinking while you're working. I'll talk about that in a moment. And... You'd be surprised by my, you might be surprised by my view on that. What I think about drinking while you're working. But uh, I really do enjoy it. I, but I can't, I, I used to enjoy going to trivia, but I really can't justify it because there's such a, doing trivia in a bar is so tied to drinking. It's so tied to drink, tied to drinking. It's a trigger for some people, but fortunately, me being a bartender, it doesn't it doesn't really do that because I'm not normally triggered by the normal things other other sober people are into. But I'm always amazed by looking at that when I see the the evolution of things like trivia that. The whole world is evolving that way. The way we make phone calls, the way we make uh, uh, video calls, Zoom calls, 
way we purchase things. That when I first started playing trivia, it was all verbal. You'd never see any graphics up or that. That was in the 80s. And through the 90s. But then it's slowly, slowly, slowly we see that progression. And it happens, it was happening full force across all these things. The way we take orders for drinks. Fortunately, the place I work, we still do handwritten orders and everything's added on the using a calculator the figure in the tax and all that stuff and then we ring it up or then we put it through credit whatever whatever there is that's the one thing where we don't see the progression for but you go to many places now and they take the orders on a either a smartphone or a pad and they send the order to the kitchen without ever having to put it into a terminal or write anything down. That has changed. But the way people make the decisions in trivia with the questions, the amount of information they have, they look at the question, they look at the clues, they look at the, you know, they look back, hasn't really changed. They'll just, when originally when someone would ask a question, you'd analyze the question. It's almost you were like you were in a courtroom. Speaking of courtroom, I got to remember, next week I have jury duty. That, wow, I forgot about that. Next Tuesday, I got to, or Monday night, I got to call in to see if they they have that. Hopefully, they will not call me for, for duty or call me or tell me I have to come in. It's not that I don't want to do my job. It's just that it's a busy time of the year and... They could always call me in September when it's slower, but they always seem to call me right in the busy season. And that's everyone down here. You know, it's not just me. It's the uh, fishermen, the hoteliers, right? All different types of people. Very busy, very store retail workers. So... With that technology thing, you just see that progression. It's stark contrast. But some things always remain the same. The group dynamics of people getting together and answering questions to trivia. You have someone that's an expert. They say, well, I'm a, I know this answer. Or I'm not sure. I can, can be confused. And it's interesting the way people remember things. It's just like remembering names. Some people are very good remembering names. Other people are not. And they'll come up with a question. They were asking a question last night where, you know, not everyone's a home run with the questions. But they were asking a Lord of the Rings question about uh, this guy who was an actor in Lord of the Rings. And they first said, played Frodo and this other person. And it turned out that it was the person that's playing Sam Ganji. And everyone started freaking out. Nothing like having a bunch of nerds freak out over questions. You know, oh, that in World War II, that wasn't the B-17 wasn't the primary bomber of the, by the, and the Liberator was, which was probably the B-17. Who knows? Right? Who knows? Everyone knows. Everyone that's one of those, those nerds, those trivia nerds, which I consider myself one of them. And there's some complaints talking about that, how, how people decide, the group dynamics are deciding a question. You can have someone say they were certain of it, and then someone says, don't be so quick, I think it's this. There was a question last night about Hamlet, one of the final questions, where you get to um, bet up to like a whole round's worth of points. And it gave you a list of ha- Hamlet characters and the question was something is in the, is rotten in the state of Denmark now with technology this highlights a thing if you have someone sneaky they can get answers off a smartphone yes they can 
they can actually leave it on Google Voice Activated. And when you ask the question, it comes right up. And that, I mean, that's no way to win a trivia thing, but they did. So the question to him was something rotten in the state of Denmark. Who said that? Now, on if they didn't ask a question and give you a list of characters, which I don't know why they gave you a list of characters, but I, I don't think I would have remembered the Laertes. Because I remember Laertes had some Laertes, I think his name, whatever way you do. But he was kind of like the counselor to the uh, the royal family of Denmark. And Laertes had the information to his son and all this stuff that um, never a borrower lender be. And then I thought, that sounds like something that sounds like something that Laertes said. Something is right in the state of Denmark. It doesn't sound like something Hamlet would have said. Or Horatio. Right? So I went there with that. And it turned out to be the answer. But you you have to be I guess you have to be kind of pristine with your answers if you're cheating on a cell phone what is worth what is the question worth but it's going to be harder and harder to do that because people can have your pieces in and all this stuff their signals you can have someone sitting off to the side giving you the answer i mean it's kind of crazy and there's diehards that said they would never never do that it's like taking a mulligan when you're on the go if, you, if you're playing golf and just taking a ball and throwing it in when no one's watching there's there's the honor system. They use it in the in, in schools, in the military uh, academies, the honor system that you know, this is the honor system. You could cheat if you want, but you don't want to cheat because that's not honorable. You're missing the point. You cheat on a test. I always felt that way. If you go through all the trouble of doing something, why would you do it to cheat and what would be what satisfaction could you take in the results of where you've taken an unfair advantage of that? And that's one of the other things in trivia. And it's the group dynamics on how you come up with the answer and say, hey, listen. And the nice thing about it is when two people come up with the same answer inside of a group, and then you say, oh, yeah, well, that must be it then. That must be it. And there's other things you just, how memory, and it's interesting how memory works, that when you hear the question the first time, you just draw a blank. It's like, I do not, I know, I can see the face of the person. It's at the tip of the tongue. It's a tip of the tongue remembrance thing. Is it John? It's this and that. And when they said Sam Ganji and all that stuff, I couldn't remember the name of the actor. I couldn't. And I was thinking and thinking it wasn't there, it wasn't there. And then someone called for a vodka and water. The water. And a blue moon. And all of a sudden, whatever that meant, a vodka and water and blue moon, I thought Sean Astin. The brain, the mind is a funny thing. It's a weird thing that works. That the way you remember these things from long ago, just like when last this past weekend when my um, distant relations show up, Fran and Michelle, you know, you, you don't recall, you don't recall them, and then they show up, you look at them and say, I remember them exactly. I remember them exactly. So it's interesting how and how we got together with my distant relations is just through technology, Facebook. It's how old friends reconnect nowadays. People make you know people they've known. We're such a mobile society. I was talking about it before. People are coming from everywhere, moving around. You have your family may have started out in Canton, Ohio, and then all of a sudden they're at the four corners of the earth, of the earth four corners of the earth 
and we we stay in touch online and then we can even reconnect online and you send a message go we used to be friends in third grade I had years ago years ago about four, uh, uh, two or three years after I was on Facebook, my sister sent me a message and said, hey, listen, I reconnected some with friends we had when we were seven and eight years old on Andrews Air Force Base when my, my father was stationed there. And it was George and Charlotte. And George was a retired military guy in Charlotte, and they, and they reconnected now. We really haven't stayed in touch much longer because if, granted, when you meet someone that you haven't met for over 45 years, I'm going to say that now, 45 years or 40 years, there's going to be a lot of things that change. My dad, uh, you know, hooked up with friends he hadn't seen in 50 years because of online searches and things like that and he actually visited him it's, it's, he, these are people he was friends with when he was in high school but it's these opportunities technology they say separates us when when people are just spending time on their cell phone or going to trivia when they're building a, a powerpoint for the trivia presentation things like that but they're still getting together in order to answer the questions. And that's still dynamics getting together. And some of this technology is bringing people together. I mean, you have Match.com. It's people meeting people. The Over 50 app. J-Date for Jewish people. Christian Mingle. Whatever the Catholic one is. Right? So... That all triggered that. When you when I saw trivia, I thought, oh, wow. When people get sad about this stuff and they get sad about losing their job to artificial intelligence or their favorite store closing because of online shopping competition, there are benefits to it. There's tons of benefits. It frees our time. A lot of the things that happen uh, in the 20th century with home automation, washing, drying, refrigeration, heating water, having a water heater. That used to be a big deal, having to heat water before you take a bath, and then you have to draw the bath. You didn't take that many, and people didn't take a lot of baths then. And that may have been a good thing if you think about water conservation and things like that. So I know it was a roundabout way, but that's, that was important to me. I need to... Um, I don't know if I need to, to apologize, but in episode 555, I may have made, say, said something that really someone took issue with, with my opinion. And it is my opinion. I apologize for that. But the person, I don't think I ever used the terminology they used about talking about a heavier person. I don't think I would use that term. It's like using uh, a derogatory term for a ethnic group or even little people. But if you did get that impression that I thought you were uh, chose your the body image and I insulted you for that, I do apologize. I don't recall that happening, and. I don't have a tendency, I guess I should, of going through my old shows and listening to them. Because I already said it and I heard it while I was saying it. Is that weird? I don't know. But I, I rarely review things, but I do recall when I... If I said something I was really embarrassed about, like I did when I was doing a show I told you about... I, I didn't say, it was the way I said it when I was drinking at the time, when I was doing episodes over two years ago. And I did own up for that, right? I did an episode where I was totally inebriated. And at the end, I couldn't even turn off the uh, recording app. And I listened to it, and I go, well, that, there is no, I don't know why the person I was with thought we were going to, I was going to post that. 
Now, it would have been a hit. It may have been a hit. I deleted it because I was ashamed. Not ashamed enough, though, to stop drinking. For I mean, I, I stopped drinking about four months afterwards, I think, or five months afterwards. I think we did a recording in, in late July, something like that. So, oh, yeah, it was about, it was a little over two and a half years ago. That, that, now I'm surprised people didn't take offense to that. Now, not offense to that particular show because that show does not exist, but there's other shows that I did and I never got a letter from them when I'm not drinking. So I'm I'm hoping I'm not repeating, I'm in an endless loop of insulting someone and not realizing it. But don't take a pointed uh, exception to anything I say if it offends you. Most of, the, most of the things I say, people come to their own decisions from life experiences. So they, they don't, you know, if I say something, it could be something dark that happened to me or something that made an impression on me that it would be very hard for me to change. Same thing can go for you, Right. You could feel strongly about a subject that I think is kind of lighthearted. But I think the whole thing that we do here is lighthearted. I try to make it lighthearted, get serious sometimes. But I do appreciate you for listening. I am going to start getting ready. Today's the double, the double double for me. Going from 1030, probably be home at 1030. Not, it's not much of a double, it's more of like a shift and a half but I am on my feet for 12 hours and that's pretty good pretty 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 good if I could steal that from that and I'll be running into my regulars here today uh, on a Wednesday hopefully we'll have uh, things seem to be slowing down slightly before they rev up again right around Valentine's Day but I do thank you for listening we're still on track for the 1 million downloads Looking for big numbers, big numbers. We've got listeners. I'd like to thank my listeners uh, in the United States, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Florida, Naples, Florida, coming in big. And uh, also my foreign listeners. Russia is coming in strong. Russia, Mother Russia. Thank you. Um, Taiwan, India, Germany. It's interesting, UK, and I I think I have, for some reason, people that don't have English as a first language must find me interesting. Say, listen to this man, listen to this man in uh, uh, Florida. He proved that America is idiot. He was born speaking language. I don't know what accent that was. It was a horrible accent. I, I apologize. Um... But uh, the intent was to say, hey, listen, this guy speaks the language natively and listen what he says. My English is pretty good. That's what you probably could be saying in, in your home countries. I do appreciate that. Uh, the thing I guess you might be learning is say, hey, this is acceptable. This guy thinks he can be on, do a podcast. And by... The looks of it, it looks like he's 558 episodes. Looks like he's been doing this a long time and he hasn't gotten any better. So if that makes you feel good about speaking English, more power to you. I'd like to thank you. And please keep downloading the show. We want to be have the enormous following that gives us the influence we want. I think this week, I always promise I'm going to have someone on a show, but this week I have... I might have a special guest on Friday. Special guest. And then say, hey, that's not a special guest. That's Jim. Well, if I have split personalities, I, I'm not saying I do. But if I did, that would count as a special guest. Right? Well, I'll talk to you later. This is Jim the Keys Bartender. Take care. <laughs>